Welcome to the quick install guide of the HawkCam and HawkCam Pro on Android. First, let's get familiar with what your camera looks like. The front, you have a hole at the top or it could be at the bottom depending on how you orient the camera in the base. That light indicates whether the camera is booting, whether it's ready for you to configure it, or if it's functioning online on your Wi-Fi network. The day-night light sensor is the light sensor that detects whether it needs to be in infrared mode or in normal camera mode. The lens on the front is a wide-angle lens, does not have pan, tilt, or zoom because it is a wide-angle lens and doesn't need that. Infrared lights. Behind that smoke glass cover there is 13 infrared lights. They will come on when the indicator tells it that it needs to be on infrared and they will provide enough light in order for the night vision to be seen. The built-in mic is on the on the back right on the side. The silicone base can either be put on top of a table mounted to a wall or hung upside down from the ceiling and then the base will attach to the base of the camera. Now we have this uh, back view also. At the top, depending on how you orient your camera in the base, will be the micro USB port that drives the power for the camera. There is a sticker on the back and the sticker has a lot of information. One of the things it has is a QR code if you, when you're configuring your camera, you can scan that QR code rather than type in the camera ID, which is the bottom line there that you see. The reset button is actually recessed inside of that hole, so you need a ballpoint pen or something like that in order to hold that button in. To factory default the camera, hold that button in for 90 seconds. The loudspeaker, try not to cover that up if you want to be able to hear good conversation coming back and forth. The ventilation vents, try not to cover any more of those than what are, are covered by the sticker. The model number, self-explanatory, and then the memory card that you can put on the camera to record to is at the opposite end of the USB power port. Okay, let's get started. On your Android, click on Play Store. When you get to the Play Store, start typing in P2P Wi-Fi Cam and you will see the app appear in the search results. You'll know it's the right app because it's a purple box with a camera lens in the middle and a green IP cam banner in the upper left hand corner. Click on that and then install. Hit the install button and when you're done you will have the screen that you see here. But don't hit the open button yet. Instead go back to your main screen. Now the next step that I go through your screens might be a little bit different depending on who your manufacturer is, but the idea is still the same. So click on your settings on your Android device, then go into the wireless networks setting. When you see the IPCAM AP-00, the rest of it will be different for each camera, but when you see that come up, click on that network. If your screen prompts you to connect, go ahead and hit the connect, and you will see the camera being connected. It's important before you leave this area that you actually see that connected. Now, if you don't see the IP cam network in your list of options, wait until the camera has a slow steady blink on the front of it. If it's still a fast blink and a pause, it's still booting up. If it's a solid blue light on the indicator light, that means it's, it's already connected to your network and you don't need to do anything. Moving on, now let's add the camera to your Android app that we downloaded in step one. You'll find the app icon somewhere on your Android. Go ahead and click on that. This will be the screen. I call this the main screen. So anytime you hear me say main screen, this is what I'm talking about. You won't have any cameras listed under add the new camera because this will be the first time that you install. Go ahead and click on add camera. Underneath that pop-up is a search button. When you click on that search button, it should find your camera. Then you only have to click on the line there that I've circled in red in order to pre-populate the DID field. If the DID field does not pre-populate, you can hand type it in or you can scan the ID on the back by clicking the scan ID button or just manually typing it into that field. I also highly suggest that you change the name at the very top so that you can identify the camera a little bit more easily. The default password for the camera is admin, just like it is on the user, all lowercase. 
So when you're done inputting those four fields, the name, the DID, the user, and the password, go ahead and click the Done button. You should now be brought back to the main screen, and the main screen should have your camera listed with the online underneath the, the camera name. And congratulations, you have completed the initial setup, but you are not done yet. You now need to connect your camera to your Wi-Fi network, which we will do now. So back at the main screen, where it says online, click the little gear to the right of the camera name. This will open up the camera's admin menu. Click on Wi-Fi settings. If the camera doesn't automatically find your networks, go ahead and hit search Wi-Fi. It will come back with a list of Wi-Fi networks that are within reach of the camera. Go ahead and click on the one that you want it to connect to. And then type in your password for that network, joining that network. You can click the button that says show password. That will allow you to verify that you've got all the upper and lower case and everything right. Something to note, the network name and the password cannot have special characters in it. So if you have spaces or ampersands or at signs or dollar signs, then you need to call the help desk at 855-644-6641 and we will help you get the camera set up. Don't frustrate yourself anymore by going forward if you have those characters in your name and password. Okay, when you're done putting in the password, go ahead and hit done. Continuing on, a repeat of the previous screen, go ahead and hit the done. Your camera might say connecting for a few minutes. That means that the camera is rebooting. It will reboot, it takes about a minute. You want to see the blue light on the front come on solid blue your camera should come back on online. Note, if your camera does not come back online, go back and repeat steps two and four. The reason you have to repeat step two is because when the camera rebooted, your Android rejoined your home network automatically. That's a function of your Android. All Androids do that. So first connect back to the camera once it gets back to the slow steady blue light then repeat step four, except for this time, make sure that you show the password and that you have the right password for your, your Wi-Fi network. If you still have problems, call the help desk, 855-644-6641 will help you get through it and make sure that you're connected to your internet. Congratulations, you've completed the HopCam setup and you can see your camera's feed even when you're away from home. But you are not done yet. You now need to change the password so no one can just tap into it using the default passwords and view your cameras. So in order to watch how to change passwords, it's a two-step process. Please go to the falconwatchcam.com support to page and watch that video. Thank you and thank you for your business.